Let's go. Fuck yeah. Woo. Let's go hit some nukes. Boom. All right, YouTube, what's up? We are back and we're gonna hit some sprints today. First time in a while. I have interest in doing them again. Um, kind of popped up. I know I've been talking about doing it a little bit. I've been doing it sparingly here and there. I've been getting some sprints in the outfield, but I've been wanting to get more volume in. Did some sprints inspired by Angus yesterday. Just some build-ups and some hops and skip like that. Um, felt really good doing it and want to get back into it again. So sometimes when I program, um, it's literally just based off interest a little bit. Uh, and that can go awry uh, left and right. But for the most part, if you just follow your interests and follow what you're kind of engaged with currently. Um, I think that leads to good programming in the general sense because you're going to give intents. If you uh, have a meathead block and have a meathead phase where you really would just want to get after meathead stuff, go get after meathead stuff. And, and you can sprinkle in and play with some other stuff. But dude, if you're not interested in the other stuff, if like if there was just a little bit where I was just kind of burnt out from sprinting, wasn't super interested in it, um, and which is weird because like three months before I was super interested and I was crushing it, um, I just kind of burnt myself out of it. And like I was sprinting, showing up to sprint because I was supposed to sprint and they just weren't super high quality, right? So um, I just kind of stopped doing them. Um, and that's not to say not sprinting is a good thing, but I wasn't given intent for the sprints anyway. So it's kind of just wasted practice, right? So. Feeling interested in them again. Um, same thing with lifting, gone on phases like that, where I'm lifting, I should probably talk about what I'm about to do first before I keep rambling. Um, but I've done that with lifting before where I went full athlete. Um, and again, I think it kind of finds those weak spots, it grows and uh, I think looking at training and how you program training in this general long-term view is much more helpful than feeling like you have to hit everything at all moments at all times um, and looking at the very micro. It's like, oh, I didn't hit my sprints today. It was a failure. Or I didn't hit the sprints this block or the jumps this block is kind of a failure. It's like generally long-term you want to expand things. And if you're pulling yourself here in strength and the sprinting comes a little bit down, but you're still expanding your general sphere of athleticism and then you pull the sprints here and then you pull the jumps here and just kind of expanding everything, right? But keeping your interest level and intent levels high in your training is really what matters the most. So we're going to start off with some of these warm-up stuff here. Nice long iso lunge here. In these iso lunges, I'm just pulsing in and out for 30 seconds. I literally just do this to warm up. This light, nice and feel this feel this nice long lunge position here before I go sprints, pulsing in and out of it, trying to turn in and up. We hit 30 reps here. Looks a little goofy, but they feel money. Boom. Then we'll hit the other leg. With these, you kind of hit some circles with those arms. Just get nice and loose here. Nice and long, loose for these sprints. You don't have to drop the layers here. It was raining out. That's another reason we're not outside. Never bringing the camera outside again based off what happened last time. So we're inside today because it's raining out. I don't think league's canceled yet. So we got league right away after this. And we'll be able to crush. We'll be primed. Woo. Boom. With these, we're going to hit some water bag buildups. Not because water bag buildups are special. Just because I got the water bag. And I like playing with the new toy that I got. We're going to play with the new toy. Learn some things with the water bag. Then we got tennis ball sprints. Jumps, snatches, body's feeling good today, intense feeling good today. So hopefully the snatches feel good today. I mean, you could get there and it could bother me too, but hopefully they're good. So typically sprint warm-ups, just keeping it basic for my athletes. I'll do some sort of build-up variation, some sort of iso lunge, get them nice and long, some sort of build-up variation just to get some rhythm, relaxation in their running, and just warm them up to run long distances, open them up. So with the build-up, I teach it like an airplane taking off, start at 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, all the way to 100%, just touching the 100% and then coasting out of it, but nice and relaxed. Your whole goal is relaxation in those build-ups um, and feeling bouncy off the ground, getting them open up, get them warmed up for that. Then we'll do some sort of bounding activity right away after, again, trying to get them long, trying to get them pushing against the ground, floating in the air. And then we'll start with accelerations, shorter sprints, and then we'll build up to a fly 10 or the race of that day. So that's kind of our setup for sprinting on the day and how we warm them up and how we progress them all the way to our max stim, max velo of that day. So we'll start with <coughs> these overhead aqua bag buildups here. Again, nice and relaxed here, opening up to 100. Um, I have about 40 yards after the camera that I'll really open up to, um, but can't really record this whole thing. Let's get it. So after those buildups, we'll hit some sort of bounding, skipping activity. We're getting nice and long. We're pushing against the ground here. Today, we just got bounds for distance. Again, my goal is to float off the ground, be nice and bouncy. Bounding isn't my, uh, my specialty by any means, but 
Nice and bouncy. Circle with the hands. Nice and relaxed here. I kind of like with those bounds to speed them up. So we'll start nice and long, and then as we hit, we have speed. That's not every single thing, obviously, but turn those nice long bounds into speed bounds as we go. Keep ripping them from there. Then, sprint variations today. So we're gonna start XLs, right? With the XLs, we're gonna start single, short tennis ball throws. From the short tennis balls, we've got three of those, two rounds of this, this is the second round of this, so we're gonna do the first round of everything here. We got short tennis ball throws, XL, right? So we're accelerating, it's like, uh, turns to be like a 10 to 14-ish yard sprint every single time. From these, we'll go into two bounce um, tennis ball throws. So we'll throw, we'll catch, we'll throw, we'll catch, and that turns into like a 20, 30-ish yard sprint. And then we'll go a deep sprint, a deep throw, um, and try to cover the whole length of the field as we go there. And it'll be a three touch, right? So one touch for XL, two touch for that middle ground, three touch for that max velo today. Let's get it. <coughs> I'm in my entire league gear tonight. I'll switch into, I'm gonna take off some of these layers here. Didn't know it was gonna be as quite as humid as it was in here today. Oh, that was too easy for throw. Fuck. <coughs> All right, we got two toss here. Took out the upper layer. Starting to warm up a little bit. These are gonna be a little bit faster sprints, a little bit longer sprints. Catch, throw, catch. Should be right around 20 to 30-ish yards on these. Oof, oh, I missed it. It is crazy how much more engaging sprinting is. If you just got something to chase, just some sort of goal. I think sprinting in a straight line for non-track athletes or with no metrics, even with metrics sometimes, just so dull and boring and so many coaches the only thing they give their athletes. If you want intent, man, just give, them, just give them some slight tweak. Give them one tennis ball. Give them a partner to race. Give them something, man. Telling them that sprinting is important. Nobody gives a fuck, dude. In the moment, nobody gives a fuck. Obviously, they want to get faster, but give them reason to sprint, and they'll sprint fast for you. Oh, that's too easy. <laughs> if you are a gym owner, or just need a gym playlist. SoundCloud has some money mashups. You can go clean or not. What I'm listening to right now, it's Money Bitch, exclamation point by Sidney Olson. This mashup is fire. It's my first time listening to it. Um, but SoundCloud, dude, a girl in the sauna put me back on the SoundCloud. I didn't even know it was a thing still. And uh, there are some bops on there for, uh, for a gym playlist. Highly recommend. Let's get cooking on this one. Let's send this ball. If you want to know if I'm a morning person or not, just took out the sweatpants for the first time today, and my shorts are completely inside out. Um, so we got that stylish thing going on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, fuck it. We're gonna work out with them inside out today. We're gonna rip them. We had to roll them up a little bit, just get those, get those quads bumping you know, over the gram. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a new style, new style look. Let's get it. All right, as long as we got them crisp and don't totally fuck with the throw, we got two total sprints here. A little bit longer, three of them, three tosses. Should be 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. 45 yardish sprints here. Rip it up. Let's get it. Let's go. Sometimes I struggle with like thinking of what I'm gonna say, or am I like providing enough content in these videos? Because I know I'm not like the Will Rattel of lifting to where like the lifting is just cool enough to like be good enough on its own. And one of the things that really helps me there, I just thought about this as I was walking back as I was thinking about like, what should I talk about today? Um, was just watching Cameron Joss's, uh, Cameron Joss's Instagram content when I was in college and how much that helped me as a coach, how much that freed me up as an athlete and how much it inspired me as an athlete. And there was very little context in a lot of the stuff he was posting at the time. This was early days of Cameron Joss before he blew up to what he is now um, and rightfully so. Uh, and now he kind of, then he kind of went off social media and I was like, damn dude, that sucks. Like I fucking loved his stuff and just, he would literally just post his training and I like, dude, that's so fucking awesome. And again, it was like early days of Instagram to where it wasn't like these carousels where everybody was explaining everything. It's 
literally just a lot of his training and then like some captions and some of the things he was talking about where he'd literally just say like agility game and like four different agility games that he posted. And it was so helpful for me, just that little bit of inspiration, little bit of outside the box thinking, or just seeing how somebody else does it. Or even if it was confirming a bias or confirming a thought that I had and having somebody confirm that for me or have just somebody to look to and inspire and then get those ideas sparking and going in my own training. And it made training really exciting for me. It was somebody that I really looked up to and still do. I really, I do, really do. Cameron just, just doesn't post as much right now, but his way of training and his philosophies were really, really helpful. But he really wasn't even saying that much. He wasn't like talking. He wasn't making these points. He was literally just showing his training. And that's one thing that I, I feel like is, is helpful again. And I have to realize that there are people looking at this in the same way that I looked at Cameron Joss's training. And it's just like looking at the training, looking at the different ways that we do things and having that inspire and make training fun and interesting again, have us geek out over training. Um, he was like my guy for that. And one of the book, again, I'm reading that Sardathi book. I can't remember the name of it now. I, I totally messed up the name of the book, but it's just talking about how no, basically no forced learning, no forced teaching, nobody that's actually looking to be taught is gonna learn anything. It's all inspiration and just little pieces of the puzzle, but you have to go learn it yourself. You have to go create it yourself. And I think that's a good part of these videos and Instagram, even if it is in short form, it's just like, just inspire people, plant those seeds in people, show what you're doing, show what you believe in. And a lot of times that in and of itself is enough content. And that's the actual money content. That's, it's really never the philosophies or the laid out program per se uh, that gets people going and then what changes, it's like just little seeds, little inspirations. And a lot of times Cameron would probably post something and I'd probably take it in a totally different way than what he meant for me to take it in, but it was still really helpful for me. It literally wasn't even what he was trying for, but it's that inspiration piece. And that, that's why I think social media is super powerful. These videos are super powerful. Not even my videos necessarily, but all videos on social media are super powerful because it allows people just that inspiration and that make training fun again, make training exciting again. Um, pieces of the puzzle that I think are super important again. I, th I think this needs to be fun. I think this needs to be, we need to have our Rockies, man. We need to have that, that like Rocky inspiration. And Cameron was my Rocky. I didn't, I didn't grow up watching, I mean, I watched Rocky growing up, but then that never got me. Watching Cameron stuff and seeing his elite level athletes, his freak athletes, that's what got me inspired to go training. I would go watch that and get all fucking hyped to go train, whether I took it the right way or not. And I think that can just be a beautiful piece of social media. Like you guys can take this stuff and totally butcher what the fuck I'm talking about, but if it, made you, if it made it fun and made you go look forward to training, that's really all that matters. So um, I don't know really where I was going with that rant, but we, and, uh, we're gonna run fast. Let's get it. Oof. Oh, dumb. I wasn't gonna get to the catch, so I went with the bat. That was gonna be super sick. And then I missed the catch after. What a bot. Let's finish this. Uh, fuck. Wasn't the prettiest, but we got our sprints in. Feeling good. I got to get the jumps and snatches. Otherwise, I'm not going to get them done before lifting or uh, before league starts in a couple hours. So let's get it. All right. I posted these on the Instagram, but we got hop, hop over the hurdle. I really like these. Takes the horizontal projection into a vertical projection. Um, feels really athletic when you're jumping off these plates. It's very rhythmic. Um, I talked about adding precision. You have to have the ability to land on both of the plates and not miss. You can't just take off wherever you want to take off from. So you actually have to land on the plate, then take off, but you have to gain enough momentum. So you have to kind of balance that out to gain enough momentum to land on the plate and then take off over. Things that combine precision and power usually feel really athletic. Things that feel really athletic get really good athletes doing them over and over again. And we had athletes doing this for like 30 minutes this morning. And I see why I was doing it right now. It's fire. It's a good one. Let's get it. Ooh, let's go. I also like talk about like injury prevention, right? Uh, the stimulus you get when you land on different things, the different angles that you're taking off of. I think this is a much better landing mechanic. I know I've talked about it at nauseum, but one of the things I've realized about YouTube is that like when you click on somebody's YouTube page, it could be their first time watching your YouTube video. So even if you've said the message, you kind of have to say it over and over again. Um, for, the, for the followers that listen, they're going to get annoyed by that. But for the first time followers, like, oh, that's the first time they heard this message. So I, I like the different landing, right? So we're landing different takeoff areas every single time, getting that ankle used to landing sideways, forward, backwards, a bunch of different angles there. And I think that's a much better landing mechanic drill than landing in the same situation every single time. That's never gonna happen in sport. What's up, dude? Ooh. Oh, are you kidding me? Kicked it, dummy. Right. Oh. 
let's go. Pump it up one more time. Oh, I got that. Come on. There we go. Let's go. All right, on to the next. So three rounds deep into this drill. I know Will and Brandon talk about no contact snatches, but looking at most of my hangs, hang clean specifically the other day and most of my snatches and when I would hang clean back in the day and clean back in the day, I'm always a no contact guy. I just jump underneath the bar. I'm a, not a very good hinger. I'm not very good at like throwing those hips through. Never have been. Um, so I'm going full contact snatches here for this warm up. Um, the whole goal is just like, and again, I don't know, don't take my Olympic lifting advice. I'm trying to piece this together organically by myself. Um, I think there's beauty in learning something on the fly and rather than like going through the process of like actually having a coach, there, there's times and places for coaches obviously, but I am geek out over like the organic process of learning something and what do you pick up on? What are the dumb things that you do when you're learning this rather than like skipping steps just because other people there. Again, if this was an actual thing that I was training for, like, I probably wouldn't do this with softball because I actually have a desire to be great at softball, but this is just like a secondary gig and I like the process of learning and trying out new things. Um, so I'm gonna go full contact snatches here for this warm up, the third set where I'm just throwing the hips and trying to get that bar as high up as possible by hitting it off the hips. And um, we're gonna try these out. This is the third set of these. I like the feel of these. Ooh. Ooh. See that one, I missed it a little bit. And then I'll go into a full squat here. <clears throat> Hat's gonna fall off on this rep for sure. <clears throat> Boom. All right, now we'll get the real snatches here and rip from there. Let's go. Same grind we've been working on, but back in the dungeon here. Uh, legs are feeling less good than when we started after all the jumps and sprints, but still feeling pretty good. Let's get it. I don't know why I muscled that. Oh. With those snatches for the first three sets, we are gonna hit these double jumps that I've been posting on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I really enjoy these, but I'm really bad at them as an earthbender, right? I think one of the best things an athlete can do is have that ability to contract and relax whenever they see fit, be nice and fluid, uh, and their frequency of movement, like they're, they're very twitchy, right? Earthbenders, like me, we're not as twitchy. I think having some parts of your training, whether it looks goofy or not, be twitchy, I think is an important aspect, and I think really the only reason a lot of strength coaches don't do some of this stuff is because it looks goofy and it doesn't look like a actual physiological change that you can do because it's not weights and you can't progress or whatever. I think that's kind of a silly way to measure things, right? Are they moving faster? Are they moving quicker? Are they moving more relaxed? I think some of these subjective qualities are very powerful and just because they're not objective, just because we can't put five pounds on the bar, doesn't mean they're worthless, right? And I think a lot of times coaches throw out things for no reason other than that. So when we jump, our goal is to jump and then tuck, tuck, land, right? Again, I'm gonna be the worst example of these ever. Hopefully we get a couple good ones in here, but we got three sets of these here, rolling back and forth, hopping. Just like that, let's go. Just as I envisioned, those jumps were not a great demonstration. I even felt like I got a couple of the pulses in there and uh, each time it was only a single hamstring. So again, when I go up, it's supposed to be pulse, pulse, back down. So I'm gonna try and think about pulse, throw, pulse, throw before I land, um, but that was a terrible example. It felt good. And again, I think there's a value in um, getting the brain and body to fire in that way. Like it felt like I was firing quick on those, um, even with some of that shaking stuff we've been doing. Um, and Joel Smith is the master of that stuff. He's, he's phenomenal with some of the frequency and rhythm based stuff. The 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 feminine side of training. This is how he discusses it at a seminar. I really appreciate that side of training and I think it's an important side of training that's not talked about a ton because it is feminine. It looks a little less meatheadish. Um, but again, you just saw me do those. And um, where do where can I go from shit to suck in my training, right? It's, it's the feminine side of training. I'm terrible at that type of stuff and I need to do more of it. And hopefully second set looks better. But let's hit some snatches. Let's get back to the masculine side here. Oh, 
I might just go no hat. Thing's killing me. Ooh, that felt good. Let's go. All right, second set of these. Hopefully, looks a little bit better than the first set. Let's get it. Ooh. Ooh. Those tiny bit better, but I think the third set, third set, we're really gonna crush those. Let's get this. Oof. Oh, that's just so slow. Not sending it. Don't be a pussy. There we go. Woo. Last set here. This set's gonna look beautiful. Let's get it. Ooh, there we go. Ooh. Oh, we got one more good one here in us. Here we go. Oh, I don't know if that was a good one, but I think we got one good one in there. Um, again, that's one that I got a little work on, right? Going from shit to suck at some of that feminine jumping energy, um, some of that frequency, some of that rhythmic base jumping. Every single athlete except one of our 40 inch jump mat jumpers was able to do this with ease. Every jumper that wasn't very good looked terrible at these, and every mid tier jumper like myself, four space jumper like myself, was mid tier at these, could kind of get it, but was glitching a little bit, right? So I think there's a little bit something there to be said. Um, obviously good jumpers, just good jumpers, they figure things out um, to say correlation, causation, whatever there, but I think there is a side to having that rhythm in your jumping and having that uh, ability to like vibrate and have frequency in your jumping, be able to twitch, be able to shake, be able to be relaxed, and I think a lot of earth benders like myself don't love doing that, and we can work on that. So let's go bend some earth. Let's go. All right, I think snatches are gonna be the only thing we get done today. Lifting wise, uh, the team that we play in league only has five players, so they're canceling. They're, they're only scrimmaging one game, so we're starting our second game early at 6.30 instead of 7.15. So whatever, we still get a game in tonight, which kind of sucks, but uh, I like playing two games for the drive. But uh, we still got a good lift in. Everything's good here, good, good training session in. And um, we got tournament this weekend anyways. Tomorrow I'll probably do some accessories just for um, the glutes. I got kind of a butt cheek that's uh, not loving me from all those swings. Had that issue a little bit last year. Really trained that glute during the off season. But then this um, past weekend, we played like seven games in a row and swinging fatigued and just kind of tweaked something up there. And it doesn't feel amazing. So we're going to do some accessory work for that tomorrow before the tournament. And um, today we'll just hit snatches right from here. Let's go. Well, that was sloppy. Ooh. Woo. All right, those snatches, I mean, they're just, they're not feeling great today. They're not feeling strong. I think I just used a little bit too much of my mental capacity of training in the sprints and the jumps and just messing around in here. I, I, was, I was rolling in cloud, cloud nine and I had a lot of creative juices. I was writing out ideas. I was playing catch with the wall. I was hitting some softballs in here. I was all over the place. It was fun though. It was a great session. Um, but yeah, it feels like my mental fatigue's off. I felt like those were trash. And then I looked at them and they weren't terrible for me. Anyways, obviously they're not great technique, but it didn't look terrible for me. But um, yeah, hopefully we, uh, hopefully we can keep the technique going here and uh, make this look clean. Let's get it. Oof. Let's go. Can we talk about the technique on that last one? That felt like I had the shittiest like amount of effort put into that and I stuck it like it was nothing at the 185, which is usually my barrier to absolutely be trash at. So, man, maybe, maybe we're making some progress. Probably not, but we could be making some progress here. Let's get it. Oh. Snatching after shoulder pressing is just a terrible idea too because I do not lock it out enough and my shoulders take a beating. But we got that up two in a row. We're two for two on heavy sets. Let's go three for three. Let's see if we can get it. All right, last set here. Then we're gonna run the softball unless we absolutely annihilate this weight, which I don't, I don't wanna speak it into existence, but this weight's probably gonna be a little bit of a grinder. Let's get it. We got some Wolf on Wall Street mixes pumping us up here. Let's rip. Oh, let's go, dude. We got another set in us, woo! Come on. All right, this is gonna be our first 200 pound, 200 pound snatch, and we're gonna fucking get it today. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Come on, bitch. Let's go. 
Let's go. Fuck yeah. Woo. Let's go hit some nukes. Boom. Can't play it for you right now. I think you just might have heard the very end of it, but now I'm going to mute my radio. But I pull into my car after that huge, huge in quotations. Everybody's freaking out about possible world records. Uh, snatch PRs. Um, Lips of the Angels by Hinder playing. Like, you can't can't make it up. Just just an absolute victory lap for everything we did today. Um, I was impressed by that. I was kind of mentally fatigued going into those snatches and pulled that one out of my ass. And uh, that's sometimes how training goes. Now we are going to go hit some absolute nuke shots against some peasants on the softball field that are just trying to enjoy their Thursday night. And we're not going to let them. We're going to hit rockets. We're going to work the lines. We're going to hit some gaps. We're going to make some people run. And we're going to get this dub. So um, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys supporting the YouTube series. And 225 is closer than it appears. We will rip 225. The one thing that worries me is when I hit 225, um, I'm not very good. Like when I hit my goals, um, I kind of just burn out of that thing. I kind of go like full-fledged into a goal. And then once I do it, I kind of just have no interest in doing the thing anymore like I hit my backflip it spent a ton of time doing the backflip as soon as I hit the backflip I just had no interest in doing backflips anymore uh, same with the dunks like I hit the dunk uh, I really just had no interest in doing the dunk anymore I did for like a little bit after but it's like I'm kind of really bad at like reaching goals and then just being done with that thing and and it, it, it keeps training fun for me when I have these big goals but I'm kind of worried that I'm going to get the 225 rip it one time and then just say I did it and then be done with Olympic lifts, which could very well happen. Again, I think there's a benefit to that, like kind of style of training is like you're working on that holistic style, like you're, whenever that new interest comes. So like I got that vertical up enough, I got the um, gymnastics abilities up enough, I got now the Olympic lifts up enough and you can kind of plug and play all these things and it keeps training fun. But um, I wish I, my brain worked in a little bit different way where it wasn't just a straight, as soon as you reach a goal, you're just disinterested completely in that goal now because um, I worked a long time for these goals. Um, and then I just kind of throw them out. Like I did the backflip again and I, I don't know if I could do a backflip right now. Obviously I could go over and regain it, but same with dunking. It's like, I don't know if I could actually dunk a basketball in this moment right now. Um, and it's like, maybe I should maintain those goals a little bit more, but I don't know. It's not really how my brain works. And I've been doing a better job of respecting where my interest levels lie rather than just forcing things. I think there's a time and place to like have the discipline and force yourself. But for me, that's in softball. Like I, I spend almost all of my time forcing, not for, I don't really force softball in that sense, but it's like, even on days when it's raining or when it's not ideal, I'll go out and hit just cause I have to. Um, and it, it's my mission. And it's what I really want to do. So like, I think I keep my discipline good in the things that I need to. Um, and then all these other like side quests of life, this video game that is life. Um, I kind of just like complete the quest and then I'm done with it. But so little side rant there, but, um, 225, it's going to take a little bit still to get to 225 for sure. We're not, maybe, maybe I go up the wheel when I'm get closer to it. I go hit 225 with wheel. That'd be kind of badass. That'd be a sweet little journey, little training trip there. It'd be kind of bad if I went there and then missed 225, but it'd be cool if I went there and got it. But anyways, that was a big dub PR. Felt really good about the training session today. It was a long ass training session. I was there forever just fucking around. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about just a little bit is if you're getting burnt out, of training. This is one of the things that's, that helps me. It's just changing up, like changing up your environment a little bit. I went to Lifetime for like two or three weeks um, and went back to my dungeon after being there forever. And I, the dungeon felt like a playground again, right? So uh, ebb and flow back and forth between the two spaces. Obviously not everybody's as blessed as me to be able to have like multiple spots to train. But even if it's going outside or trying somebody else's program or just doing slight variations that make training interesting again, I was getting pretty burnt out just because I had spent six months alone in the dungeon, like lifting by myself. And then I just, I just needed a switch and went to lifetime for two weeks and came back and it, again, it felt like a, another playground. It was like, oh my God, this, this stuff's all fun, new again. And uh, I think that's a big part of training and um, having interest in it. So just slight little twists there and uh, variations there were helpful. But appreciate you guys watching. I'm gonna go hit some nukes. Let's get it. Keep chopping wood.